Hi, I'm Emily. And I'm Stephen. And this is In a Barbie World. A podcast where we look at every Barbie movie from 1987 to the present day. From fairy tales to literary classics. From Mariposa to Mamadia. It's time to get unboxed. Readjust your lippy. Rock the ball gown. And let's get our Barbie on. Barbie in the 12 dancing princesses is this our first in is it in no she was in the nutcracker oh she was right so we're going back so reuse reuse recycle and re pete do. <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so this is one that i've obviously already done before but you're new to it um mm. Which is quite interesting. I love the fairy tale of the Twelve Dancing Princesses. I think it's it was one of my favourites when I was a kid. And I love that Barbie did it. And that, like, like 12 female protagonists, Disney could never. 12 female protagonists, Barbie's like, cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. Collect them all for like 30 quid each. Um... I think it's genius. I think it's great. I've um, never heard of this fairy tale before. What? I and I was I was speaking to my daughter, one of my daughters, and she'd never heard of it either. And what? Yeah, I just no, I've no recollection of this story at all. So I had to go and sort of look it up, and saw that it's quite a popular one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> especially it's for like basing other worldwide. stories on. Yeah, yeah. And, and, but you're, normally in adaptations they don't stick with twelve; they just go down to six. Yeah, or, or they're, they're sort of the kind of limited. But I'd never heard it, so I read it, and then and then I was thinking, I don't, I don't even, I don't even understand this fairy tale. What? But I think that's because all the other ones have been embedded in me for the first yeah. five years of my life. This was like coming to some amazing myth from some other culture I'd never heard of and I feel <laughs> weird like how have I missed this one yeah it's, is, it, is it a Grimm's fairy tale is it a yeah it's 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 Grimm um one of like Grimm's the Grimm's collected it from mm. the oral tales of Germany but it's it's literally there's versions of it it's like Snow White and Cinderella there's versions of it all across the globe for cent- going back centuries like it's like the bible it's like one of the most common stories i've got an illustration from a scene from it on a mask that i wear like that's how much i love it um well, when you're fighting crime yes. i'm the 11th princess <laughs> 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 Also, when I need to go shopping during a global pandemic. Oh, good, yeah. idea, good idea. Good idea. I, I like to think of you as some kind of mass vigilante taking out the bad guys of Suffolk. With an illustration from the 12 Dancing Princesses. Yeah, but you could be all 12 of the princesses. You could be the super team on your own. I think there's 12 of you, but there's just you with a different mask. <laughs> so I, I digress um. already. <laughs> I love the music. It opens with this, it feels a lot more filmic and cinematic. I feel it was the first one distributed by Universal. Um, And I, yeah, I think I'm going to let you talk for most of this one because people have already really heard my opinions on this. Okay, cool, pressure. Yeah, so music, as you say, Czech Philharmonic Chamber Orchestra. I didn't know you could have a Philharmonic Chamber Orchestra, but yeah, the music's nice. Um, it, it, It feels a bit like a throwback to some of the earlier movies mm. um it, but but it's very much you know the same sort of level of animation as pegasus say yeah but, um yeah so i i just i kind of found it rather confusing so the sort of film do we have a do we have a nice little bit at the beginning i can't remember the i remember the film starting with some some ambassador or something coming into this castle, this another city-state, and uh, trying to impress on the king about... Yeah, about he's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invite your daughters to a royal ball because we've got a prince and we want your princesses. But then usual, one by one, the princesses the, yeah, usual, the, the, the sort princess, of turn up. But they, they turn up with carrying bugs and beetles and on stilts and... Yeah. Uh, just causing chaos and I forget. I oh, uses a word about them, rambunctious. 
Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, oh, that's what a fantastic word I haven't said. I've never seen out said out loud outside of, I don't know, like a Jeeves and more, um a Jeeves and Worcester kind of thing. <laughs> oh, she's a rambunctious <laughs> little filly, wasn't she? <laughs> but and but what's nice about it is that although his twelve daughters are clearly a bit of a strain on the king, he absolutely freaking adores them and puts yeah. up with them, even though they do things like it's lunchtime, someone's laid out all twelve or thirteen soups and rolls. The girls all come one by one, sit down, hello, papa, give him a kiss on the cheek. And then as soon as the, as soon as the royal cobbler arrives, again, not a job I knew existed, they just fuck <laughs> off. They haven't touched their food or anything like that. When I, when my kids, if they'd done that, I said, you come back here and you eat your soup. <laughs> <laughs> you come right back here. <laughs> that cobbler um, can wait. I'm the, because, I'm the fucking like, king. He can wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they're like, oh, the royal cobbler, the royal cobbler. And he's like, girls they're just shoes aren't they and they're like oh how could you <laughs> i can't believe you've done this i know the look they gave him well, i want to talk about these 12 daughters all right yes i'd like to talk about the 12 daughters and their names and alphabetical they are alphabetical i hadn't tweaked that <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because <I> was, <laughs> other things were worrying me too much so uh-huh. basically what we haven't said is that the, the 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 king is a widower. Yes. And yes, and like I would be too if I I too would be dead if I'd pushed out twelve children, including one set of twins and one set of triplets. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's. I think 12... on top of my previous children, the triplet finale. Yes, I would just die because I would be like I. We we clearly we clearly have some sort of belief where we can't use contraception. And this is this yeah, is a this Catholic is just country. Just going to right? keep happening. So she said for seventeen years, all she's done is pump out princesses. So we don't know how we don't know when she died, but we know it was in. It's got to be after five years because the the youngest kids have their fifth birthday, don't they, during the film? Yes. Yeah. Um, and she looks looks good in the painting, but then people did. Yeah. You know. She looks very, very young. She looks as young as like Barbie, who is sixteen and one of the middle children. So we possibly she's old. She was older when she died, but mm. they've just kept a nice hot that's, picture. Of that's her around. true. But yeah, you know, I imagine she died an empty sack of skin. <laughs> I just, just, I just, just bled out. I mean, oh my word! Um, and, and I know this happened. I know people. That, I, I just, even even now today, you you have there are television programs and YouTube channels run by people who have got a ridiculous number of kids. And actually, I think it's yeah. a terrible thing because you can't possibly give them the care. Um, but never mind. Back in the day, you did it because you had to. Well, well, a there wasn't contraception, and b or if there was, it was pretty grim, and b um. People died, kids died. Yeah, and so to have you know to have twelve survive is is pretty fantastic. Anyway, and, I'm more into... and just just you know just to, women's bodies are fantastic. They are built for mm. this. They spring back. They can do it all again. We're the strongest people on the planet, and you should respect us more. Carry on. All right, boss. <laughs> <laughs> um, however, twelve is fucking ridiculous. Anyway, <laughs> what they had done clearly is from the future got a book of children's names. Yeah. And picked the random... I'm, I'm, I'm assuming this is set in medieval times. I know it's like fantasy, not real. There's talking parrots and cats and things. But where are these names coming from? So we have Ashlyn, mm-hmm. which is a f- pretty modern name. As is Blair, the next one. Blair, Very modern Blair, name. yeah, Blair. Blair, I think you'll find... It's a very American name. Yeah. As is Courtney. Courtney. <laughs> um... And then... Delia. Is that Delia? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which reminds me of um, the Delia, famous cook. But that's a very British thing, isn't it? Um, Edelin. What is that? That is not a name. That is <laughs> that is two names that have been mashed together. Because I think they took the William Burroughs approach and chopped up all the names in that book they brought forward and put them together. It will be fully... <laughs> it'll be, I'll be fully justified in this statement at the end. Yeah. Fallon. Fallon. Which is must got to be the most American name of all time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, do you know, oh, after 11 of them, and I don't know how many that was. Um, a, B, C, There's D, E, F, G. Hadley. 
Yeah, no, I want to go back to Genevieve, right? <laughs> which who oh, is yeah. whom is Barbie? Which is the only sort of well, it's it's a very French name, obviously, and it but it feels time appropriate. Mm-hmm. That's what I mean. But they, I, but they bookmark Genevieve with Fallon related, and Hadley. <laughs> yeah, I think it, it's related to the fairy tale as well. So they knew that their main character had to be Genevieve. Ah. So then they decided to make her a middle child and go through the alphabet. Um, gotcha. And then obviously they've decided to give them fairly modern American names because that's who their audience are, modern Americans. So Indeed. you can't call everyone Guinevere and Lance. No, Bart. no. You've got to call them I, Fallon and I Hadley. Get I get that. And, but then you have Isla, which is a nice, that feels fairly appropriate, but, you know, very yeah. Scottish, very Gaelic. Um, and then the one that really bugs me. Yeah. What the fuck is Janessa? Is her, name, is, her name, is her name Janet? Vanessa? I mean... I think Janessa is a name. Oh, fuck off. No know. white person's ever been called Janessa. Well, I think that was sort of the point I was yeah. going to make. It is an American name, and I don't think it belongs... It's 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 who... very... Yeah, it doesn't belong to the character it's been given. Yeah. And we just need to talk about the triplets. Janessa, uh-huh. Kathleen, who's got a very good Irish name. And I think has red hair, which is a bit on the um, yes. a bit on the nose. And Lacey, who Lacey. is who's uh, who's whose flower is a white lily, which is actually the symbol of death. But again, let's not go there. <laughs> um, yeah, the Janessa, Kathleen, and Lacey are seven years younger than the twins, so that's yes. a bit odd. I hadn't realised. I hadn't really twigged that. Yes, there's a and, huge gap. And they're Shelley Kellys, and they're yeah. creepy. They're the creepy. The triumvirate of Shelley Kelly's, which we've seen so often. It's almost as if Mainframe Entertainment have this model <laughs> of three Shelley <laughs> Kelly together. A yeah. <laughs> now, but, but the thing is, yes, they've got different names, and some of them seem to have um, uh, l- l- little character traits. Like um, mm. one of them, who's the one that connects? collects bugs that's our, our friend janessa uh, yeah janessa right. collects bugs courtney reads blair rides horses the twins are into sports yes and some of it some of it comes and it does some of it does come to play later on the two who like mm. going on their stilts is still a thing i don't think that's a thing but <laughs> okay it, they're but, into like acrobatics yeah but it does pay off actually yeah. at the end of the film so all right but yeah but there's a lot of people to follow and most of them look like barbie there's not there, the... there is a blonde, I can't remember who it is, but there is a blonde pink dress wearing uh, sister who is not Barbie, who yeah. is also blonde. And what's really lovely about this one is that there's one for everyone. Ashlyn has more olivey skin and quite a pointed really, nose. Yes, there is. Blair there has little, very pale skin. There are like little it's tweaks. really fun. There are little tweaks to it, but I found it quite hard. But then the film makes a joke about that later on when... Um, <laughs> When our antagonists can't get their names straight either, but at least I wouldn't have got confused. I'd have got confused amongst the triplets, not between the different ages. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, but yeah. And, uh, so there's yeah. there's a there's there's a lot of characters here. There's a lot of Barbies, and as you say, a lot of dolls. Did they actually make all the dolls? Please tell they me did. they did. So of course they did. So there's somebody. Wait, come there's, on, man, collect them all. There's somebody somebody with twelve dolls, including three Shelley Kellys, um, and they sold the Shelley Kellys separately. The twins were the only ones that came no. as like a pack themselves. Every other doll was separate, including the three triplets. And they're all them really separately. important because they've all got their own flower. They've all got their own gemstone. They've hmm. they're, they're, there's I, I imagine they did something along those lines. Also, millions of computer games. Yeah, yeah. Millions of them. Not one of them the same. There's a PC one, there's a Game Boy Advance one, there's a Nintendo DS one. Sometimes they're they're sort of, sort of silly little mini games. Um one of them appears to be like Castlevania. Well, you know, this this was a thing. This this yeah. this is the most full out I've seen Mattel since the very I early days. Don't know if it's because they were being distributed by Universal, or if they just decided, or if it came off the back of it being popular. I, I guess Universal probably had something to do with it, so the game yeah. probably came out of some sub sub studio of theirs, and they, and it's quite easy to just change the graphics on any old game, isn't it, and make it a Barbie yeah. game. So that that's fine. Anyway, we got all these kids, and 
they to be fair they seem quite nice just a lot of them huh. a lot of names to remember yeah. um which again i kind of wish that one of them was a bit more brassy than the others but just to give them some of them just although i'm told they've got all these behavioral differences to me there was just a lot of kids a lot of people especially later on when their individuality is taken away it's just impossible mm-hmm. okay. for an old fart like me anyway they go actually the royal cobbler right royal cobbler derek played by i assume um our friend ken yes who um well somehow he's chosen that genevieve is the one that he's got the crush on <laughs> yeah, but i'm pretty certain not. i'm pretty certain some of the other girls have got a crush on him as well all ages. They call him handsome, but like he's the same age as Genevieve as well. So. Yeah, well, that, 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 that's not a thing, being the same age in that, in that time would have not <laughs> been a thing at all. But anyway, but yes, he makes um, he makes lovely shoes and it turns out all of them love to dance. Yeah, like I, I, I'm honestly not sure. I wouldn't like to yeah. but it was just, it was just, it was just, get it wrong. It's just weird that there is this one ethnic accent. But Yes, yes. No, oh, no it's not like the animals have... Um, accents in that way it, 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 it's it's just Felix yeah but it's okay I'm, I'm okay with it because it doesn't rub me up the wrong way like uh, Major Mint did yeah yeah which is that was that was set in a weird world that isn't a very yeah. nice bit of history whereas this is just he's just mm-hmm. got a, this is what people do isn't it this it's is bloody Mike accent. Myers has made a career out of people with Scottish accents and he's not Scottish yeah, yeah. so that's anyway I'll, I'll move on there is Phoenix mm. does exist. And I've forgotten, of course, that Genevieve, Barbie's character, has a cat um, who's mm. named after the waitress from Schitt's Creek. Oh, no. <laughs> Twyla. Again, a name I'd never heard before. And I've come across them both in fairly re- both examples <laughs> of it in a fairly recent time. Twyla is his rather well, adorable, actually. She's a cat with a sort of ginger oh. cat with a sort of, that, that likes to think she's a tiger. I say she. Is it a girl or a boy? I would say it's a girl. Yeah, Twyla is a, a, a I, huge girl thing. I like. Didn't, I, like I don't him. like. I don't uh, like Twyla. No. I, don't, I find I oh oh oh. You know we've had peak talking cats in Barbie movies in the Princess and the Pauper, with that cat that thinks it's a dog. Like, <laughs> um, beautiful, really great. Had a whole song dedicated to it. Deserved. Twyla. Is very infantile. She's a and kitten. Go, 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 and oh, it could be a, oh, it could be a boy. I don't know. I genuinely don't know. But basically, it wants to be a tiger. It's like I'm descended from a race of scary cats. La 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 la. And I this time, Twyla rubbed me up the wrong way. I and, was like, shut the fuck funnily up. Funnily enough, like, just shut up. It would have made more sense for Twyla to have an Indian accent than if she was descended from tigers. Yeah. But I just, I'll just leave that out there. I <laughs> kind of like Twyla. However, she was utterly irrelevant. And there's this whole subplot with a character so... that we haven't met yet. That... And this is the thing. It like it felt very Cinderella in aspects. Whenever we would hang out with the mice and Lucifer in the 1950s Disney Cinderella. And it, you're just like, oh my God, get back to the plot. And... Twyla is very much like that, and she she's you know she obviously squares off with Brutus, who, who, who we've yet to meet, but we'll get to Brutus in a second. <laughs> anyway, so that, that, there's a nice little dancing number, although again, I, I just feel there's a lot of repeated animation going on, I, and it's nice. They like to dance, and that's important. And I I think it's um, rotoscoped as well. We're back to sort of rotoscope ballet um, and dancing, which. You know, I really, really enjoy. I've got a lot of time for dancing in movies. I really, you can't go wrong with it. And whole... I understand how it's boring for others, but I really, really enjoy it. But they it. don't, they don't actually ever do it in this one. To be fair, I was, I was a bit mm. afraid. I am one of those people that find dancing impenetrable, as I've said before, especially ballet. Mm. Yeah. And um, I was afraid with twelve dancing princesses that this was <laughs> going to be a lot of dancing, and it's not. In fact, yeah. there's not even that much singing in no, it. There's, there's, not. there's some themes. No, there's not. And there's some sort of little ditties, but there's not. It's it's in, it's really different to where mm. we've gone for. So this isn't. What was the last one we did? Um, what was the last show? Wasn't it the Barbie Diaries? And what was before that? Pegasus. Mermaidia. Oh, Mermaidia. Yeah. So and before that was Pegasus. I feel that Pegasus is almost like the apex of these kind of movies. I know it's not a proper fairy tale, mm. but it's got the, mm-hmm. the whole fairy tale tropes with it. With, yeah, Ga- with, so. with, with Gargamel from the Smurfs as the bad guy. Um, 
Whereas this, this doesn't, I, I, this one doesn't feel quite as such as, as a, we've all been leading up to this point. But it's using things that we've seen before. And the rotoscope yeah. stuff is absolutely back from Swan Lake, Lake isn't yeah. it? It's, um, but it doesn't, it doesn't overdo it. And it doesn't do it in that silly way that upset me a bit at the end of the nutcracker <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah dan- dancing's here they like it that's fine i'm pretty sure all 12 of them wouldn't love it because sisters aren't like that yeah but okay. and i was like some of these sisters was hate each other some of these sisters would be shit at dancing and not enjoy it yeah and that did cross my mind but then i went you know what it's really lovely to see 12 women who were related to each other getting on and supporting each other's interests and and having fun and joking around and, and being kind and it's not the like, point. i really like it the, the... you can always count on barbie to have good female role models yeah. in that way and, and 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 it's not to the point because there's another woman that they're going to rebel against in a minute exactly so they do this now the king has um he's he, he he's taken some of these words from that ambassador to heart and he's a little concerned that his girls are a little rambunctious and they're not very royal i mean not too sure that all 12 of them need to be prim and proper princesses right? air and because... a spare that's all you need to focus on so that's Ashlyn and Blair that's exactly so like what really no said. one else that's matters that's exactly <laughs> what Maisie said again I didn't even know that was a that was a thing but yes um yeah and and you know let's take it back to our own royal family Prin- Princess Anne was never going to become queen yeah. so she Nothing has been allowed to go about. off and do you know At the Olympics. Olympic Games and, and become a UN ambassador and you know and an icon and indeed, um, she wasn't an icon when I was a kid. The, 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 the re- renewal of Princess Anne is another show we could do. <laughs> <laughs> history has been kind to Princess Anne, I will say that. Yeah, because Princess Anne has been kind to history. Indeed. And, you know, but she's got divorced. She's done all sorts of exciting things that other royals haven't, mm. weren't able to do. But anyway, really weird that all of them have done it. But so he brings in his cousin, Duchess Rowena, um, yes. who... Uh, comes in looking like Marie Antoinette on a <gasps> on a rickety old um, coach with her footman. I can't remember what the footman's called. You're going to remind me. Derek uh, Desmond, sorry. Desmond, Desmond, yeah. We have Derek and Desmond because that's that's where we get the men's names from. They don't. They're, they're very un-American names, Derek and Desmond. Yeah. I would say they are more like East London names. All right, Derek and Des, we're going to do some, <laughs> yeah. do some art, mate. But um. Yeah, Rowena is comes in and she's ostensibly been brought in, so she's the cousin of the king, and he wants her to teach them to be ladies, to be princesses, mm. to teach them mm. etiquette. Mm. Obviously, we can tell she's evil because she's got a rickety old coat, she's got a haughty face, and she has a pet monkey because they're, because they're in season this year, you know, it's very popular. Yeah. Um, called Brutus, who's a who's a who's a spider monkey. Um, who hundred percent like if your character walks on screen and has a pet monkey. That person is evil. Like, there is nothing... Yeah, like Ross on Friends. Fucking, Ross on Friends. evil. Aladdin. <laughs> like, you just know <laughs> that they're going to be evil if they have a pet monkey. Well, fundamentally... Like, I said what I said. No, fundamentally, you should not have pet monkeys. Pet monkeys are a terrible pet. They, dangerous. They, it's they, not but, fair on the monkey. And they get really attached to you. And unless you can be at home all day with that animal, you mustn't have a pet spider monkey um yeah they need a lot of care a lot of attention uh, all your attention they, they need more attention than a, than a spouse or a child um so it's it's terrible i mean they're lovely i do love monkeys i've got to say but i'd never have a pet one no, also you shouldn't they're all wild that, animals all that. yeah you should yeah absolutely we you know we could extend that to all animals but cats and dogs yeah budgery girls maybe fish fine but not monkeys anyway mm. He's a little brat, uh, but, but whoa! <laughs> well, <laughs> I've got the c word written down for this character. Like, I am not okay with this character. Like, he is arguably the true villain of the piece because oh. Rowena has her motives, and she's like an anti nanny McPhee. But like, this little douchebag can suck a dick like he is so unnecessarily fucking vile he's and he but, but without the charm 
Oh, do you remember the 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 stoat? The that was... stoat when he made tea for Gothel at the end, and he's yeah. like, Ugh, and he's got the weird accent, and oh, it's so good. And even, so and even the racist. he has a French accent. <laughs> even, even the you, you're in charge of editing, Emily. Um, even the um, you can make me look bad. You look good. Even the um, even the bat. Do you remember the bat in the Nutcracker? Right. Yeah. There, there's 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 this history of these of these. I'm going to call it the animals that, that the bad guys have, and this but yeah, this guy like is Iago's. They're fun. This this character is not fun, and I don't know if he's meant to be. But in the same, they 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 just quite didn't hit the mark. They gave us Twyla and Brutus, and they just don't work. I don't well, monkeys care and cats about Twyla are... getting courage, and I don't care. About Brutus, I want him to have his monkey paws chopped <laughs> off and made for wishes. But I want him made into soup. I just know. <laughs> monkey spunky brain soup. Yeah, he because monkeys can be cheeky. I never really thought of a monkey as evil as such. You know that, that it could be on well, the wrong side of the track. Northern Lights, thief, that kind of thing. I I get it, but he's he's a little. I, well, I'm not going to use the C word. Turd. He is a turd. He's a little shit. He is so fucking horrible. If this was a high school movie, he wouldn't even be the jock. He'd be the, like, fucking Christian Slater and Heathers. He's like an incel meets a fucking dickhead. He's entitled. He's arrogant. He's, he's like, repulsive. He He's pathetic. He's just horrible. He has absolutely no redeeming features. Even his aesthetic, even the way he's designed, is just like, ugh. Oh, so, yeah, so we'll talk about that because the, um, the animation hasn't moved on and it's still drug- struggling with hair. Mm. That's not human hair. And, um, yeah, I just, I just, I just don't see the point. I could have done without Twyla and, um, and Brutus. And Brutus. I, I, they have a little contretemps, but they don't really drive anything along other than... And, and, and with a name like Brutus, it's such a, a weighted name. <gasps> I was waiting Brutus. for him to yeah. betray someone and he doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't they, betray anyone. He's they, just a dick. They don't do any of that. And, yeah, I... It just it just feels a bit tacked on, and this is a little bit longer than the last couple of films as well. I've noticed that this yeah. this, this one could do. Now having I'm interested in your view of it because this you obviously look you watched this one a while ago for an mm. earlier episode of your, of your of your own stream, um, and I'm wondering after, after having seen another eight Barbie movies very closely together whether you might have a different opinion of this. But yeah, I just felt this one this one was a little bit draggy, and that I could see well, I could just cut him out because I could have just used um. Uh, Desmond. Desmond, as, yeah. As, Why as, have Brutus and Desmond? De- De- Desmond could have and, and, found and it meant things. that Desmond wasn't fleshed out enough. The, there's a there's an insinuation that Desmond has the hots for Rowena, mm. but it's not ever really. We don't get enough time with it because we have to give time to Brutus because it feels this. Now that I've seen eight more Barbie movies, and this was one of the first that I not only saw but spoke about with someone um and i completely understood at the time why they remembered it from their childhood so fondly and i was genuinely very surprised with how much i enjoyed it coming off the back of fucking mamadia especially it's yeah it's um it's a bit bloated it's a bit sort of they tried to take things that have worked from previous movies and put it all into one. It's like in Glorious Bastards, how that's like a Tarantino 101 oh movie. No, no one has ever, ever <laughs> com- compared. This is this is the Glorious Bastards <laughs> of the Barbie canon. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I. It's like tick, tick, yeah. tick, 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 and sometimes ticking boxes doesn't lead you. Think, anywhere particularly yeah. I mean, good. We, should, we should probably talk about it in the summer but yes this feels like a greatest hits from those nutcracker rapunzel mm. swan lake movies um and and all the things that we've learned all the interesting things that have gone on in fairytopia even the magic of the pegasus yeah there were yeah. there's really interesting things going on there and 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 it doesn't have the outright charm of princess and the pauper which is mm-hmm. where i feel it belongs in that group those yeah. princess movies as they brand it's, them it's it's trying to reach the heights of princess and the pauper you really really feel but it's mm. just not clicking not quite right anyway we've barely got anywhere in this film marina's turned up she's um <laughs> i can see this being one of those episodes and um, marina's turned <laughs> up you mustn't let me run the plot 
ever again. And <laughs> um, clearly she's evil. There's no doubt about it. She's even she makes no bones about it when she's talking to Desmond. Her plan is to get the crown. Yeah. Um, she's introduced to the girls, um, the father saying, "Look, you know, there's your auntie. Well, cousin, I don't know what they would be. Great cousin, yeah, cousin, cousin second time to move, second, whatever. Second doesn't, cousin, doesn't I don't know. Here's a really attractive and haughty lady that's going to teach you yeah. to be a princess. There's this lovely bit where we get reintroduced to the characters for the second time in ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. So he, so he went round all their names around the dinner table. He does it again in a long line. Genevieve is late yep. for some reason, from which, for what I can't remember. I'm sure it was important because that's her. That's her plot point. That's, oh, her, that's her thing. Character trait. That's her thing. She's just late. being late. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, and to start off with, Rena's quite charming, and then and then as she gets down the line, she gets pissed off with the whole thing and gets more and more haughty as she goes down. I <laughs> love her. I still think she's a really wonderful villain. Not only her design, which would be such a joyous cosplay, the way she is, the way she genuinely seems to want these children um, to learn etiquette, even though she hopes that they never assume the throne because she 100% intends on taking it. So her mixed messages there a little bit. Very well, I think, I, think, I think later on, right, when certain opportunities present to her, she goes on a very, very evil route with the girl. Mm. But she's always got an evil route with the king. Um, but yeah. at least she's got a plan, right? At least, uh, yeah. You know, we, we've talked about this before. The plans of some of these bad guys are shit. So <laughs> for me, she's the best character in this film because at least 100%. I can get behind what she's doing. She's got a great character design. I wouldn't. I bet there isn't a doll of her, is there? Oh, great question. I could, you know, I, I could see. And, and she could double up as a Marie Antoinette clone i could like get my barbie guillotine on her and stuff as well but yeah i like i like i liked her i liked her i like the way that she's you know she, she's haughty and she's sneering and she'll give shade to characters like this is... and she's like voiced by fucking queen of life Catherine o'hara is she yeah and i gave the shits creek link too early didn't i yeah Honestly, Catherine O'Hara is a fucking gem. Well, more shrines need to be erected in her honor. I she have fucking no slaps. idea. I love her two pieces. So of course, Rowena is a wonderful character because she's voiced by the most wonderful actress. That is, how did I miss that? Mm-hmm. Also, youngest child's going to be very upset because she's a huge Shit's Creek fan and a huge Catherine O'Hara fan, and she didn't realise it either. And when I tell her, and it's because she's doing a sort of English accent. Yeah, I mean, she's um... yeah, r- r- yeah, okay. And so again, we're back to this guest. Star. I mean, I don't know if she was a huge star at the time, but she yes, was certainly... yes, yes, because this is post Beetlejuice, post Home Alone. So she's very well known. This is this is a this is a this is a coup for the for the Mattel industry. Um, mm. So yeah, interesting. I had no idea. Well, there you go. Now we all look idiots, and you definitely have to re-edit this podcast so we don't look like idiots. <laughs> Any, anyway, yeah, she, she's magnificent, and now she inserts a regime. The regime involves things like you can't have all your pretty dresses with these special flowers on. You're going to wear these grey dresses. You're going to go to bed yeah. at eight pm. You're going to wake up at a certain time. You're going to learn how to use a fan properly. You're going to learn to no dancing, yeah, no fun. Yeah, no dancing no, and no singing. No even singing. though it, princess etiquette, it, it's it's interesting. Usually, they would be the things that need to be. You need to be a good dancer and you need to be a good singer because they're incredibly feminine traits, and you but need to show off to neighbouring kingdoms. But she doesn't want them getting they're married. They're already good at it. No, but she doesn't want yeah. them getting married and therefore inheriting yeah. the kingdom. She wants them to fade into the background, to be grey, to be. To, to become old maids or something like that, so she can become the queen, because it doesn't mm-hmm. suit her to succeed in this realm. Yeah. We also, I don't, I don't I'm, I'm, you know, she, she's also got a secondary plan in action as well, which Barbie sort of half gets the gist of, but doesn't come clear to the end. I'm just wondering if you, if you got the twist, just you know, it's, <laughs> as, as part of our normal. <laughs> <laughs> Not the twist, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it wasn't really a twist. It was quite clear, and I assume I assume that's fine. Anyway, she yeah, basically she tried to kill the king by poisoning him slowly. You know, in a quite a traditional um, 
she was womanly. Just, well, that, that, that's it's quite often the other way round, isn't it? It's like a yellow wallpaper, isn't it, where the guy tries to kill his wife with um, the mm. arsenic in the wallpaper, just slowly, 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 and 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 the medical people don't really understand what's going on, and and, and she's doing it. She is yellow wallpapering it, really, isn't she? Because she starts yeah. sort of putting ideas into his head about the girls. You know, not being good daughters, and and then there's an accidental bit later on where the girls mishear what he's saying or walk away too soon, yeah. and there's, so there's, there's, there's stuff like that going on. Anyway, the poor girls. Um, one morning they wake up and it's Kelly Shelley triplets' birthday. Mm. Um, and and Rowena slams that one down as well. Yeah. Um. She's a she's a cow bag, and uh, she really is. And 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 you could have thought you know, she could have been a little bit more subtle about things, but yeah, that's 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 Rowena for you. So she's a, she's a strong, interesting villain. Mm. Now, now this is where I really lose face for this film <laughs> 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 because the machinations required for the following just don't make a lot of sense to me. By accident, so they all share a room, a lovely circular room with 12 beds in it, almost as if it had been designed for 12 children. And in the middle of the room, there's this lovely sort of floor mural. I don't know what it is. Yeah, like a mosaic. A mosaic. That's exactly the word that I was looking for, which has all their birth flowers on. Again, didn't know that was a thing. It's lucky. But they aren't luck. Not only has he got 12, it's impossible. The twins and the triplets must have the same birthstone. And birth flower. Anyway, doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, because the triplets must all have the same birthday, right? Because they do, because we see it. Yeah, yeah, doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah. Doesn't matter. There's a flower for each of them. And Barbie somehow, <laughs> or Genevieve, works out that by stepping on them in a certain, in the right order, alphabetical order, as it turns out, as you've shamed me. Well, it's, it's, it's order of age. Yeah. So basically, they every child, and I, I know where you're going. <laughs> Because <laughs> I briefly thought about first time I watched it, I was like not even gonna think about it, to enjoying it too much. Now I'm watching it again. I'm like, mm. <laughs> so this woman gave birth to twelve children. She, I assume by herself, assigned um, a gemstone and a flower to each of her girls, and she confirmed this by putting it on the cover of a storybook of her favourite tale which she gifted to the children one each every year for their birthdays. Yeah, when they I hit five it. years old they all got a copy of her favourite book with the different flower on the front cover and her favourite book is the sort of version of the Twelve Dancing Princesses fairy tale but it's just one princess mm. which I like to think was the mum. I like to think that mm. um, even though it doesn't make sense and so through an accident Genevieve realizes that the mosaic on the floor they've never realized this before even though some of them are 21 years old um, <laughs> that the flowers on the floor correlate with their own flower that is also on the front of their book and I was hoping that it was going to be a group thing, that if they all stood on their flower, something would happen. But as it says in the fairy tale, you dance from flower to flower, turning three times on the last one, and a secret passageway opens. And come on, it's so magical and gorgeous, and this handrail oh. appears. Oh, mate. And it's, it's so it, lovely. I, I said at the time, oh, look, it's like, 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 like there's this sparkly effect, and they go down. It's just, it's just when did the mother have time to sort this out? Right. What is her skill set? The, 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 Maybe when she was pregnant each time. But, but she, like, she, was, was she waiting for 12 of them? When did this, you know, I, I just... There's so much organisation. Yeah. I want to see the project plan. I want to see the timeline. I want to the understand blueprints. the critical path. I don't. How often did the mum visit this land? I, I, I... Surely only three. In which case, how did she even know it was still there? How old was she when she visited it? Does she not pass it off as a childhood there's, memory? There's, there's, there's a lot of organisation that's had to go into this. And then, yeah. luck, you know, and and isn't it lucky she didn't die? Well, it's sad. she's not real. I'm not really that sad, one way or the other. But, you know, say she died after the twins. Yeah. All that work unfulfilled. Yeah. Because she couldn't have been doing it, sorting it out when the others were alive, were that alive, you know, that, that mature. Like you say, one of them's 21. Yeah. And, 23 even, I think the oldest is. Oh, my is. God. Well, this is ridiculous. Any, anyway, 
there's a magical kingdom which echoes something which they've forgotten to show us till later on <laughs> they reference it it's the same as her garden but we haven't seen the garden yet so we don't know that <laughs> yeah that's like a weird edit isn't it that why 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 are you referencing something we haven't seen yet where well, it might have made more sense not to say that and show us the garden later anyway in this magical kingdom yeah mm-hmm. they these magical musical instruments come out including a timpani drum which i used to play in the school orchestra so i do feel nice i do feel um a little i, I quite enjoy hearing the bomb come from that and they dance and they dance all night and um yeah and and they have a lovely time and then they hurry back and get back into bed and they are shattered because that's what happens when you mm. type all night kids yeah. <laughs> and um you fall asleep in your porridge and you fall asleep in your porridge this is quite funny <laughs> but but yes so they've they've had one night so yeah they're they're it suggested they can they go down three times, isn't it? So, mm. so rather than saving it, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna go the next night. However, they've ruined all their shoes because they've been dancing all night. They're, they're I guess they're ballet shoes, are they? I didn't really it wasn't very clear. They're just dancing shoes. Yeah. And um, and this is when Brutus comes to play because Genevieve hasn't put her ballet shoes away. Can, oh my god! It. I've just realised something. We need to go back. Yes. There is oh. one moment in this film which is astonishing. There's one thing that happens in this film which rises above every Barbie movie so far, just for one second. There is a fantastic transition from one of those boxes that, is it Hadley keeps the, um, whatever, whatever one, no, or keeps, yes. the, keeps the insects Gen- in. Janessa, Janessa keeps keep, the bugs in. Keeps the bugs in to the top of the carriage of Arena's carriage. I've I've watched the first half of it and then I watched it again my daughter and we both said individually, Wow. That yeah. was amazing. And it's I, like nifty. It's like film it. It is. It's, it's cinematic. It's fantastic. I wish oh god if the whole film had because there's a lot of opportunity with this film to do things like that with the circles and, and and locations that are mapping onto other locations. Mm. And they don't really go there, but and that's yeah. and that almost feels like a loss thing, but I have to say if we ever do what's the best scene the best thing in any of these movies right now that is coming out that's just a brilliant thing regardless of the fact those bugs amount to nothing in the rest of the movie again yeah, I've got the, but the... it's it, it's to sort of have these characters have a personality like oh, they're all just oh, a bit sure. different oh, they've all got sure. their little hobbies but all their other hobbies come to something they all yeah, they true. all work towards something in the final um, in the final thing anyway where were we I'm lost um, um, we're downstairs. We're in the golden pavilion. We've come back, and all of the dancing shoes are fucked. And Brutus finds a pair of fucked dancing shoes and shows them to Rowena, so she knows that they've been out dancing. And we start to see a bigger glimpse of her plan because she worries that if they're out dancing, they must be out dancing with princes. And if they're out dancing with princes, they might get married. And if they get married, the five, then they the have to olds. rule. The five-year-olds are out dancing with fucking princes. The five yeah, years are going to get, get married. married and rule the kingdom. Fuck off. Yeah. Stupid Rowena. Anyway, yes. But that's just her paranoid. I, I understand her paranoia. She And she's sharp yeah. enough to realise something's going on. Yeah. But why, you know, I've heard of a double date, but a 12 a date, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that nobody knows. And I like that they never do that. They never do make them dance Mate, with real men. The whole, even the whole Genevieve Derrick thing is not really a thing it's only in his yeah. felix's heads until much much later and 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 I, don't, I think genevieve has a bit of a crush on him she you can tell there's a mutual attraction but it's not important yeah it's not no it's not um and, and none of the others do there aren't there aren't oh and i'm in love with the baker and i'm in love with the candlestick and, maker and derek easily could have had 11 brothers or whatever absolutely but he doesn't oh my god can you imagine, can you imagine? <laughs> they'd all begin with d and they'd all be like from the east end of london <laughs> <laughs> but yes so i've lost it i'm lost again help me emily yeah so rowena is like um you're not allowed to dance anymore you're not allowed to sing anymore i'm gonna lock you in and you're not allowed to go anywhere but of course they sneak down again the next night they continue to dance with their new shoes now uh, and in the meantime their father has grown ill and everyone's a bit sus 
So Genevieve has asked Derek to find this man who Rowena has been buying yes. shit from um, to figure out what her plan is because she does not trust her. Um, Rowena is absolutely gutted that they were able to escape again. Um, so she locks them in for the third night. But of course, they go down anyway. Wasting and they dance everything. forever. Mm. And it's only Courtney, who has clearly read the book several times because she's the book reader, that's like, oh, if we go back now, then we're going to be, we're never going to be able to come back because the, the princess in the book was only allowed to come down three times. So this must be our last time, I guess. But leading up to this, um, Derek's figured out that Rowena is trying to poison the king. He gives up his horse to get some shit that was their mum's back. And if we think that Ashlyn is 22, so she's had a long... She's had a good few years with the mum. And, like, she was, like, a teenager. But but, but they can't know their mum because their mum was probably always pregnant. And pregnancy in those days meant bedbound. So... I don't know what the relationship is like with these girls and their mother because the, the five-year-olds, surely their mum would have died either at their birth or, like, a couple years down the line. So they're not even going to have a memory they're of their mother. They're going to have no memory of the mother at all. In fact, if anything, you know, their, their sisters will probably be more like their mother, their older sister. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a bit, a bit weird. But, you know, the girls have gone it's down. What it is. Because, you know, they've overheard two of Genevieve and another one. I don't who else is with her? I've overheard half of what they're probably dad was saying. Yeah, and where he said, you know, that they're trouble, but that's not quite what he meant, because he finishes the sentence to say, but they're the greatest I, thing I, I, that I've ever done, and I love them so much. Yeah, I do hate that. I do hate that trope of characters mishearing or half hearing something by i love the opposite i love when characters hear things that they weren't meant to hear when they're saying nice things mm -hmm. i hate when they hear things that they weren't meant to hear where they're saying horrible things it is it is a bit i, th easy. I think it's lazy but, it's very lazy but you know as often we will say barbie film you know it's it's uh... <laughs> but but barbie films haven't relied on this sort of thing uh, before. i don't think so um, like they've they've often been and and to this movie's credit as well, it's very self-aware. Every time someone does something and and you're got, you've got a cynical comment mm. coming up in your brain, chances are a character on screen will say that thought for you. Be it Felix or even one of the other girls. And the way I like, like yeah, the way I like to justify this one is I think Rowena knows they're outside the door because she tricked yeah. him into saying it. Yeah, she yeah. puts those words in his mouth. Yes. pretty much which makes me wonder and then and then matey boy desmond chases them away so they don't hear the second bit of it but yeah. it does make me wonder if this is actually a plan am yeah. i giving rowena too much credit is it just absolutely she, not Catherine I think she's that i'm giving her more <laughs> <laughs> no she's 100 percent a, a perfect reflection of her voice actress um very smart very cool very funny and yeah and derek manages derek is a good boyfriend because he's been paying attention. He paid attention when Genevieve was practicing the stone dance in their mother's garden, which is called the mother's garden. Um, and he notices the shoe polish on the different paving slabs because he's super into shoes. So of course he does. <laughs> he's the Columbo really of like shoes. That. Yeah. No, it is. It is good. It is good. But okay. So he sneaks his way down to the golden pavilion, and he's like he's there now and he's like oh shit like Rowena's after you blah 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 and the monkey has watched Derek do this so the, the so Brutus tries to get Rowena to come in and not much time is wasted it's it's quite again like there are no stupid decisions made they they treat their audience with respect no one does anything dumb like the, this so easily could have been Rowena doesn't believe the monkey has anything of value to show her so leaves and then it's another 10 minutes before she finds the the princesses in their golden pavilion. But the monkey wins out and Rowena is like, oh, you weren't being a stupid idiot. You did have something of value to say. And then she goes down to see the golden pavilion. She learns that you can wish for things that you want in this world. She steals some of the wishing lilies, which is so smart. I wouldn't mm. think to do that. No, that... I'd be like, and, it, and... it probably wouldn't work outside of here. I don't know. I don't want to try it. I don't want to do well, the princesses world. hadn't come to that kind of conclusion. Again, though, I think it's a nice person thing. Like, well, no, the lilies live in this world. Why would I want to take them out yeah, to our world? Well, That's you not don't fair. get anywhere in this world being nice, Emily. You must know that by now. 
not according to Barbie. Steal the lilies. Um, <laughs> and she does. She steals the lilies. She goes back up. And then all of a sudden, it's incredibly dramatic. Things in the world start disappearing. The boat. The yeah. bit well, she that gets, takes them she back to the to, to smash up the mosaic, doesn't she? It's so Which has, dark. has a real impact on the on the magical underworld. It's like high stakes. She's like, I'm going to fucking smash up your entryway and you're going to be trapped in that little kingdom of wishing lilies until you fucking die. Like, she 100% thinks that they're out of the equation now and they can just live in their little land dancing to their heart's content for the rest of their lives. It's very dark. Again, Barbie movies aren't afraid to take elements from the original fairy tales of darkness. We've seen that before with villains, outcomes, and we'll see it again in this one. Um, and, and with the smashing up of the entryway. So she's perfectly capable now to go ahead and get the king to transfer power of the kingdom over to her and k- finally kill him, give deal him the killing blow. But, of course, they're in a place where you can wish everything. So, again, you know, you'd be staring at the screen yelling, just wish, just wish to know the way out. Like, obviously do that. And they do. They don't, they don't take the piss. Barbie's like, I wish I knew the way out. Mm. And the place shows her the way out. And you're like, good. Because that would have been really annoying if you hadn't done that. Mm. What is really annoying is that for some reason, and I I know why they did it, because they needed to establish their relationship a bit more, but I wanted, I wanted it to be more about the girls and the sisterhood. Yeah. So, but it's not. So... so, so... <sighs> He has Derek hasn't shown any interest in dancing other than helping the girls dance, right? He's a cobbler. He's not he's not yeah. he's not a dancer, he's a cobbler. And yes, so Barbie fails she she sort of half works out how to do it, how to get out. But it takes big old Derek to say, Let me have a go. Hmm. And like, why would you suddenly you know, why are you why are you the next person in line to try a dance move? That doesn't make any yeah. sense. And then Oh, it only works if they do it together. Wasn't it fucking lucky he'd gone down there then? Because if the only exit route relied on a guy being down there to dance with you, that's not much of an exit route. Yeah. It, 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 it could only have happened if he had was down there. Um, so there's nothing, you know, would it have worked if, if two of the Kelly Shelley's had had a little dance? Yeah, I would like to think that it was just that it needed to be a partner dance. Yeah, but that's not the ins- insinuation here the insinuation here is that you know it, it's about these two being a, a couple and destined to be mm. almost which makes makes you wonder makes you wonder what what the queen had set up in the first place maybe she'd uh, yeah maybe she'd planted him in the uh, in the uh, in the in the royal cobblery <laughs> yeah yeah she stole him from birth and was like you're gonna be a fucking cobbler to play out my well that's why she had plans. so many kids right because after about seven she said to the midwife look i want you to steal a kid from a good looking family and then <laughs> drop him off at the cobbler's house outside <laughs> say the stork boy <laughs> <laughs> no it's yeah it's it's a bit it's a bit clunky i think but mm. at least it gets them out of that peril um you could have had yeah. something more quest related but it, we're quite a way into the film now this film yeah this film is like a not quite a shaggy dog story but in telling us there's a lot of setup here Mm-hmm. There's a huge amount of, compared to some of those other films where the setup's done in the first ten minutes. Five minutes, yeah. Yeah, this 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 is all set up, and the crisis happens really quite late on. Um, mm. But they get out through, and they arrive in the magic garden, which yeah. had been referenced an hour earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I think, oh yeah, it does look like it, doesn't it? That would have been nice if you hadn't mentioned that before. <laughs> And um, and then the, my favourite bit of the film happens, which is um, so basically the king, she, she, Rowena tricks the king into signing an official document to say that Rowena is now the queen um, until he can once again be able to um, take up rule. Take up rule, but she kills him. As far as I look to yeah. me, she full on, she full on kills him. Full on kills him. 
and she's now the queen. And now the girls not only have now got into the real world, they need to stop Rowena. And in my yeah, in my favourite bit, they use all those rambunctious talents. Oh, because the court Rowena says, guards capture all the princesses and stick them in the dungeon. And you've got to wonder. Yeah. Some of those guards probably wouldn't have done that, right? If they were employed by that nice king and they'd known those girls all their lives. Well, I don't know because I think that I think they're external because they talk about how Rowena's called them there. Ah. Like they're they're in they are aware of the world, but I don't think they're particularly mercenary. They're like, yeah. So she's like, I've hired you to protect me, and they're like, and the princesses, and she's like, no, the princesses are traitors. They're not here, therefore that makes them traitors. So capture them, and they're like. Okay. Yeah. Like no one questions it. But there's... they're like, "Who is this woman? Where are the twelve princesses we've known all of our lives? Never mind. Let's go get them." Yeah. No. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. But it, I just love it because all those girls, just, like even the fucking stilts, yeah, come to some. <laughs> fun. It, it pays off. It's stupid, but it pays off. Yeah. Plant and pay off. And it's really fun. And and yeah, that is my favourite bit of the movie that it does have. As the girls, you know, become action heroes for ten minutes, um, yeah. and they and they save the day. Um, I do think it's over a bit. And quickly. <laughs> it, yeah, it is. And Lacey's little arc of everyone has a thing. I don't have a thing. What's my thing gonna be? And her thing is that she's saved some water from the magical land, which healed her wound oh, that, earlier right, in the yes. movie. And she decides then and there that she has to give it to Barbie. She has to right now. Mm. Um, that's her thing. That, and the other that's right, kids she are like, don't fucking do that. And she's like, I'm going to do it. Yes, I'd forgotten. Yeah, I'd, yes, I'd, I'd forgotten about that. But yes, she has stolen the water. Well, she hasn't stolen the water. She's done no different than Rowena did. Oh, yeah. And then, yeah. And then they go and have a big fight with Rowena with the magic fucking tulips. Yeah. Or magic lilies, aren't they? Which is really, really cool. She basically brings, they turn up and they know that their dad is dead, but they have to get rid of Rowena, but she's using the magic lilies. And she uses them to resurrect these knights of, these like pieces of armour basically, who then full on attack, like a sword nearly goes into Barbie's face. Like it's fucking cool. Mm. Like it's really high stakes. And they both use their wit and their agility to defeat these pieces of armour. No magic involved because we knew Rowena wasn't magic so it was cool that she managed to get some magic previously we've had a lot of magic based opponents whereas here it's just some woman but she's stolen some magic in order to be able to defeat them at the end and even then they don't need to use magic in reverse to defeat her which is really really quite cool and everything's at stake lacy's been captured by desmond all the animals have had their little boring tie-ups which i don't (laughs) care about uh, the king is fucking dead on the bed. Like, he is deceased. And Rowena, quite interestingly, <laughs> has this magic lily and could be like, in a very fairy tale way, she goes, you know what, Genevieve? Go fuck yourself. I'm going to make you dance forever. Of all the things she could have done with that. Until you die. Like, <laughs> she could have been like, I'm going to... Kill you. S- explode your head. Yeah. But she doesn't. She's like, I'm going to make you dance forever, which is a very fairy tale. It is, the most, it is the most fairy tale I attack ever. <laughs> um, and again, in a wonderful sort of payoff, the fan comes out, which has been established and dripped throughout the movie that they're kept on the girls' persons mm-hmm. going forward. And she waves the the, the like dust, a uh, magic the, dust back towards Rowena. Pollen, I guess. Um, I guess in quite a clunky but powerful way. It's magic and pollen, so, of yeah. course, it is now Rowena who has to dance forever. And Desmond catches onto her in a very golden goose way. Again, very fairy tale. And the two dance off into the night. Um, Forever until they fucking die. A Brutus um, finds time to pack his dark. bag and join them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I really like that. I think it's, it's very dark. It's very fairy tale. It's very worthy of this movie. Um, again, I wanted less Brutus and more Desmond. He was a fun character, and we didn't get enough of him. No, you're right. There's an absolute. Shame. It's absolutely hinted at that he has a huge crush mm. on Rowena. And who wouldn't? 
Yeah. You know, powerful woman, powerful, sexy woman. You, you, Great you would. smoky eyes, mm. beautiful dress. Lovely hair, although I imagine it's a wig, but whatever. Um, and it's quite nice that he's taken away on it. I mean, he doesn't, but he doesn't do anything in the film. Oh, I suppose he smashes no. up the mosaic, but he has... He just sort of does her bidding, like yeah. guards the door and smashes the mosaic. If he'd, been, if he'd been Brutus, if he'd been the one yeah. who found the shoes, if he'd been the one that... that, yeah. that, that, that caught on to what was going on i think the film would have worked just as well if not better and his character would have yeah. made more sense and then his punishment would have made much more sense because at the end of the day yeah he's just a footman to an evil person does that necessarily yeah. mean that you should be um you know i, I don't know how we don't you know how he how was we... just following orders but, eh? yeah but you know this is this is medieval fairyland people do stuff like that i'm not going to forgive mm. him but i would it would it would have been more unforgivable yeah and because also it's implied that he enjoys the punishment he's like mm. oh, oh no i guess we have to dance forever now <laughs> <laughs> where she's like fucking get off me so again so she's like doubly annoyed and it's you know it's traditional as well that the it's weird that brutus doesn't get trapped in it brutus just loyally follows her which is a bit bizarre well, he, because he seems to enjoy luxuries and the idea is that she's poor and well, I guess he realises that that household ain't going to be very welcome to him after he... Yeah, monkey soup for everyone. And he's a monkey with a suitcase, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the fact that he's... Because again, that's a plot point from very... When we first meet him, he's got his own little mini version of her luggage. <laughs> he's, he's found time to pack it and carry on. And yeah, and then just suddenly, just suddenly it's over. And suddenly... Yeah, Lacey, Lacey feeds the king the magic water, which resurrects him. Oh, and Genevieve has the classic line of, we thought we lost you, which is always delivered the same in every version of this line. And yet the implications of it are so much heavier than the delivery ever is. It's like, we thought you were fucking dead. We thought you had actually died. And one of us was going to have to take up rule and... All of us were going to be in mourning and it 100% was all going to be our fault and it was going to be fucking dreadful. Luckily, we had some magic lake water that resurrected you. Um, thank God. I, I just want to draw a parallel with um, so quite popular on Netflix. Is a, a, it's been a Korean TV show called Kingdom. And the Kingdom is, is, a, is a period era, Joseon era, um, zombie TV show, which starts with the king dies, someone gives him a magic elixir to bring him back to life, but he comes back because he's fucking dead as a brain dead, ma- flesh eating zombie. Oh God! <laughs> and who then infects basically the whole kingdom, and the whole kingdom gets taken over by the zombies. And and it's you know it's it's period era sword fighting versus zombies. Really cool, very highly recommended. So but cool. I had in my head when I was watching it. <laughs> so he comes back as a brain eating zombie. <laughs> That's Barbie and the Twelve Dancing Princesses there's a, there's too. A, there's a sequel here where the whole kingdom has been overtaken by zombies, <laughs> and it's a chance for Brutus to 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 come back and be a hero by helping Genevieve, <laughs> the only surviving non-infected daughter, to rescue the kingdom. <laughs> That's where I went with this afterwards. But um, nice. but yeah, yeah, it's one of those it's one of those tropes of bringing back someone to life, which mm. I think very rarely really gets thought about and yeah. i have seen in some in some comics and some films where that person who's coming back there is something missing in their lives isn't there like their soul has moved on or something like that I, mm. i've seen it before mm-hmm. but yeah I, I don't like i'd rather he was just really ill and they made him better than than he died then he died but, but then it's so good for rowena that he that she did just like full on go with the plan like the plan was working but perfectly I, yeah. but then her punishment, dancing forever, which I assume there'll be some. You know, does that means she's going to die in about seventy-two hours to exhaustion and not being able to eat. I, yeah, I don't know. Probably. Um, it just, it just seems a very, 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 very dark thing, and her punishment is a bit of a fun thing. Um, it's yeah. Without when you're seven, yeah, it's yeah. a fun punishment. When you're twenty-nine and fifty, it's like yeah, like there's going to be. That it, it is going to be like they're zombies. They're, they're, it's going to be horrible. Like mm. they're stuck together and they have to dance. They're going to look like walking corpses within the year if they even survive that a, long. There is a whole it's very very dark. There's a whole darker adult version but... of this film I could easily make. <laughs> yeah, and and I think that's what's nice about it. There's elements of darkness within there. 
under really quite saccharine scenes mm. otherwise. Um, so it's a really funny one. But yeah, and then and then Genevieve and Derek are married at the end. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's like, and then they got married at the end. And you're like, wait, what? No one needed to get married. They could have just had a ball to celebrate oh. and Barbie and Derek could have hooked up. Or been seen holding like, hands and exchanging a glance. Yeah, like, or dancing together. And they'd invited a bunch of other men as well. And they all had a big ball to celebrate. And they were allowed to dance and they were allowed to sing. And, and that was the celebration that they end on. Rather than an, a fucking full-on wedding, mm. which just seems very bizarre. And then it literally, like, abruptly ends at the wedding. It's like, roll credits. And, it, yeah, it's very... Um, again, and it's because The Princess and the Pauper ended with a wedding. But that felt earned in a way that this didn't. And there's a payoff, isn't it, that the two, in The Prince of the Pauper, the two people, yeah. the, the four people getting together aren't the people getting together that you thought would get together. Oh, sorry, yeah. no, they're the people you thought would get together, but not the people that traditionally would have got together if it wasn't a film, yes. if that makes sense. Yeah. Whereas this just swims tacked on. Is he gonna, Is he now the heir to the throne because he's married the sixth daughter? Yeah, I daughter? don't know, like, I hope not. I don't think so, he's a cobbler. Ashlyn should be heir to the throne. Yeah, but, it, but and again, is it does it follow the British monarchy? Where you know the, there is no mm. female line, so actually it's no. fucking irrelevant, and they need to go and find the nearest male relative who might not yeah. even be from the same royal family. You know, this this has happened yeah. in history. You know, people without heirs or without yeah, male James heirs. The, James the first. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you you go off somewhere else. So the fact he's had twelve daughters, big fucking disappointment in terms of the monarchy and passing it on. Yeah. But this isn't real. Henry the Eighth would have been pissed. Yeah, too right. So, yeah, um, yeah, he could have saved himself a lot of time, couldn't he? With a, after the sickly sun. Um, anyway, yeah, it's, it's weird film, weird film, weird, weird pacing in the whole film. It's a lot of setup to this joke, and and the punchline is actually quite good, apart from the very yes. end, which is a bit what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, um, and it's one of the longer ones, but it felt it felt like it took a long time to get there. And as we it was s- only an hour and 23 minutes. Which is quite long. It's seven minutes longer than the last one. <laughs> normally a- seven minutes, and most of that was Brutus and Twyla. Yeah, yeah, true. But well, we could have cut that out. Um, yeah. I mean, there's a bit, lots to love. Lo- lots to love in it. Yeah, uh, lots, lots Rowena, to love. Rowena is definitely my favourite villain. There. Um I think musically, it's got little snatches of classical music, Mendelssohn and stuff like that, without being overbearing, without it being the whole really, thing. Really, really great music. Um, really lovely, lovely amount of dancing. Loved the credit song. Really enjoyed the oh, credit song. Ah, credit song nominated for an Emmy. Not even surprised. Well, I think that's our first time we've been able to say anything like that to one of these films so we've talked about how the first few films made a lot of money but now this is this is a film being somewhat recognized for its It's art yeah and i think that's valid i think they've come a long way and whilst it's not perfect you can see why it's popular you can see what they thought to try that they're sort of going down the modern disney route of trying to recapture what worked before while still remaining fairly original to themselves I love the original fairy tale. I think it was a great idea from a toy selling point of view and a storytelling point of view to do this fairy tale. Um, I love the dresses. I love that you can pick your favorite princess. Uh, Shannon asked me first time round, and I said Courtney because she was blue and liked to read. Now I would say my favorite is Ashlyn because she's the eldest and I really like her design. Um, like who is your favorite princess? Still twins, of course. Of course. <laughs> I mean, just anybody who's who's prime. No, no, uh, yes, they're twins, and they have to do the same thing. But the fact that it was a ridiculous fucking thing. Hopefully, they did circus skills. I, again, I want to see a movie where those two go off and become trapeze artists and <laughs> and solve crimes around the kingdom in in um as, as by use of their circus skills. I'd fucking love that. But the fact no. that it paid off at the end that they were able to fake how tall they were because of yeah. that, that that did you know I just there were. Bits, bits of it were pretty. I mean, it wasn't the greatest bit of writing in Barbie movie history, if that's a thing. I think we've, I think it we've is. seen better. But I just, I just like that there was very little wasted stuff. Everything. The only thing I can think of that didn't really come to anything. Two things. One is Twyla's tigerness never really paid yeah. off, and the fact that Rowena's carriage fell to bits. I thought they could have done something that, with that. 
I think that was to imply that she was poor oh, she's on her and needed I get, I get to that. become... But wouldn't it be, yeah. but she just sort of left it outside. Wouldn't it have been nice if she tried to get away and the carriage was still broken and they couldn't get away? Yeah, you know what I mean? That's true. When there's so yeah. many other things where they've planted seeds yeah, and paid... Not, not, not fantastic. You know, there's not... It's not like, oh my God, this is an Inception-like twist. Nothing like that goes on <laughs> in this film. Um, and I do wonder if I'd have enjoyed it more if I even had ever heard of this fairy tale before. Or maybe I'd liked it less because remember how I feel about yeah, Rapunzel. <laughs> you were so angry at Rapunzel. I was kind of glad when you said you'd never heard of this fairy tale before because the, even though there's lots of different versions, the what's what's really interesting about this fairy tale is it often paints the the princesses as these like malicious, uncaring. Um, women who are just they are going to their magic palace and they are going to dance all evening and any the idea is that the it's from the point of view of the king who's like why are my daughters always tired why are they dancing she's always worn out i'm gonna get all of the various men of the kingdom anyone who can figure out what happens to Uh... them um gets to marry them and anyone that has an attempt and fails is killed and the girls like always drug the men the night before so then they can sneak off without anyone knowing and the one that does it does it because he's got like an invisibility cloak and he follows them to the thing and then he comes back and he steals one of the lilies and he steals one of the things and he shows it as evidence and he's like they sneak off to this magic place and they dance with men all evening and then they have to stop doing that and they have to marry either the eldest or the youngest has to marry the man that discovered them and then they're like chastised for the rest of their life for having been so rebellious so I can see why it's I've... lovely that they don't go down that route I, here <laughs> I can see oh, bloody hell um, yeah so it, it's like one of those elves and the shoemaker quite dark one then, yeah where, where where someone if someone finds out what's going on there's going to be some bad sexual politics going down um yeah yes okay well I'd, I'd like i'd like to see a version of that story writ large that was mm. more in keeping with that because that sounds that sounds a ripe sociological um it's picking, fun so. and i'd like it more feminist as well like none of this punishing women for being independent bullshit mm. and i think i think there has been writings on that I was, I was doing some investigation on it and you know there's some some modern um or, or authoresses authors i don't know how to say mm. it um mm-hmm. have, have used this fairy tale to look at femininity and womanhood and, and, and things like that yeah so yeah, I, I don't. I don't think I lost out by not hear, of hearing of it before because mm. let's face it, it's not the first fairy tale that Barbie has um, decided to just use the barest minimum elements of. <laughs> but really fun elements. This mm. idea of twelve princesses sneaking off to a magical place to dance all night. Like that's that's basically what the fairy tale is about, and it's bare bones. And that's what this movie is about, and it's bare bones. And everything around it, it it's really interesting as an adaptation and it, in the wikipedia article when it looks at adaptations of the original fairy tale it's quite i don't know you, you know when you just read things and it's like these people did this as an interpretation mm. and these people did that as an interpretation and barbie decided to not stick to anything at all they've got derek who isn't the same as the soldier and it's like all right <laughs> can you not please just because it's got barbie's name attached to it doesn't make it bad no shut up and, 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 and actually you know at least she stuck with the 12 Whereas yeah. most adaptations bring it down to six, um, if not three. Yeah, oh, and then so and then at which up. point what's the point? And, you know, and it, when when I win the lottery and have a room dedicated to my podcasts and a sh- whole shelf, a la Kirsten Dunst and Small Soldiers, where I get all of the Barbies from the movies, I will be getting every single one of the twelve princesses. Do you enter the lottery? Because they're cool. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. I was say, you, have to end, you have to be in it to win yeah. it. <laughs> Got to be in it to win it. Okay. Um, so, I'm intrigued. Yeah, because I've written in my notes that I was going to push to be, to to put it at third place. But now that I've talked about it, I don't know that it should be that high. But then I'm looking at what's at third, and at third is still Swan Lake. Yeah. And I don't know if... I think this is better than Swan Lake. So I think finally, 10 shows in, we're about to have a disagreement. <laughs> yeah, we're about to have an argument. Fight, well, fight, fight, fight. I don't know about that. Um, Yeah, I, I think Swan Lake has somehow managed to avoid other films going above it. Yeah. But I have to think, what I would take away from this film is is the great villain. Yeah. 
That's my favourite yeah. bit of it. I think there's so much other bits of it just raise too many questions in my head and therefore I'm giving it too much shade. Whereas I look at something like Ferrotopia, which we had some issues with, but I enjoyed it. Magic of Pegasus, I really fucking enjoyed, yeah. Oh. Um, and what I, to me, it's in between five and six. Is this better than the Barbie Diaries? And oh. I enjoyed the Barbie Diaries more than you, I think. Yes, you did. Um, but I probably enjoyed this more than the Barbie Diaries. So for me, it's just outside the top five. It's number six for me. But I can see that we might have to split the difference here. <laughs> that, mm. that I think you're... Because I'm thinking back to the magic of Pegasus and I did really enjoy the magic of Pegasus. And I, I'm looking at it now and I'm like, how is Swan Lake above the magic of Pegasus? Because... It, oh, it had such uh, a great villain, didn't it's, it? It had, it had, it had, it had two villains. It nice. had two villains. It had... Yeah, secret, yeah it, I think it's it, it's easy for us to forget, but that is the... That's the Citizen Kane of um of Barbie movies, right? <laughs> um, yeah, but but I did really. It, you know, you're right. The more mm, it was good, but this felt a little hollow in a way, and I think it's because the you know there was a lot to take on. Mm. Twelve characters. That's a lot of screen uh, time to even think, just establish one sentence worth of personality. And I think training. if we're going to put the the, the, sort of the feminist spin on it, the fact that they could only be rescued by um, Derek by the dual dancing, by the fact that they it's all resolved by them getting married. I think that's a negative point on it. It is a negative I think I think Brutus true. is a negative point. Oh, I, Brutus I is like a massive Twilight. negative. Twyla, you didn't. Um, I didn't like Twyla. Uh, I think I think bits of it are loved. Absolutely adored. If but... if we were ranking villains, this would be number one. This But as we're ranking movies Yeah, I I I'm gonna I'm gonna say six. Just outside our top five. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. I'm going to come down with you just because I'm looking at Magic of Pegasus and I. P Magic of I Pegasus really 3D, Magic of Pegasus. remember as well. <laughs> all right. All right. It's going in at six. I'm surprised. I thought, I really thought it was going to go in at higher. I, I, I did as well. I, I thought this was going to be like a princess and the pauper kind of thing. I thought, oh, yeah. someone selected to be on your show before because it means a lot to them. Yeah. Um, and I can absolutely, you know, we put our Mattel hats on and you can see what a wonderful idea, way to sell toys. And, the, you know, I, I did a bit of delve on the computer games front and this was, this must have been expected to be huge. Yeah. Um, And just, there were just elements of it that sat uncomfortably. I, I need it. I know it's a Barbie movie. I know I, I know I sort of expect too much, but I'd like to have had that whole mother story explained to me a bit better. What happened to her? Yeah. How did she arrange yeah. all this shit? How how yeah. how who, who built the mosaic in the floor? How has no one noticed this? It, it's full of plot holes. Now I get it. I get what mm -hmm. they're doing. I get where they're going from. Um, but actually, when you just explain to me the plot of the actual fairy tale. Mm -hmm. Well, there's so much more they could have done with it. Mm. There's mm -hmm. ripeness there. I, and I, I'm just surprised I've never heard of it. So if you're happy with six, I'm happy with six. I'm happy. I'm happy with six. I'm a little surprised, but actually you're right. Like last time I hadn't had the pleasure of Pegasus and Mermaidia and Pauper. And coming off the back of those, it, it, it's not as high up as... I perhaps initially thought it would be. And I'm, so I'm, I think I think six is fair. And I'm very intrigued. You know, we, we've, we're ten in now. We've done mm. a quarter of the films. Yeah. Bizarrely, and, and I'm so fucking excited because <laughs> at the beginning of this movie there was an advert for Barbie's third fairytopia adventure, Barbie Fairytopia: Magic of the Rainbow. I know. And I was watching this movie with my mom, and I went, "Oh, there's a third." one and she was like oh what have you already seen the first two then i was like yeah yeah i've seen the first two and there's a third one and it gave me a little like hint as to what was going to happen obviously because it was a trailer they do. And that's what they trailers do. Are. So, so interestingly <laughs> they, they, they they, what they actually do is on the dvd they do a trailer for the second mermaidia movie <laughs> so not my ferrotopia movie then they do a trailer for the first one as if like <laughs> that makes sense and then say there's a third so yes the trilogy completes next and then we've got the two spin-offs later on <laughs> i'm 
so excited. Is it really sad that I'm genuinely so fucking pumped to go back to Fairytopia? I love this land. I love Alina. I really fucking hope that mermaid's going to be there. Like, I'm so excited to go back to Fairytopia. And it was like, oh, I mean, like, tiny little spoiler, but like, probably not. But they like showed Froggy Laverna and they were like, Laverna's back. And I was like, yeah. And I, 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 I like so that. Good. I like that. Con- I'm I like so these, excited. I like these movies within a movie. You know, there's there's a movie verse. Um, yeah, and, uh, fuck uh, the MCU. Barbie Fairy Topia is where it's fucking at. Because in the previous one, in Barbie Diaries, in the beginning, there's a big advert for the princess films. Yeah. Um, so they're clearly starting to put these films in different boxes. Mm. Um. Um, and there's still a few. Yeah, there's a few more. Together. There's a couple. Like I said, there's, there's a couple of spin-off Barbie movies. We've got some more. Um, you know, we've got um, some the Christmas Carol, Three Musketeers, mm. Thumbelina. We've got some more fairy tales or, 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 or tale adaptations to come. I think we've still got five, six, seven movies that we're going to really struggle to fit into our top 10 <laughs> i think we're going to be shocked some are going to move down and then we get into the more modern films which i think will be a different a different taste yeah i think they're going to be a different vibe but you're right like from my instagram travels like after the next fairytopia we've got island princess which seems very keeping in the vibe of where we're sort of at currently um so yeah i think you're right i think there's going to be real competition coming up i think we're going to be pleasantly surprised with a lot of stuff. And I wonder how long, you know, looking at, I wonder how long it's going to keep itself up. I think we're going to be, I've split these into segments, pink, purple, mm. light blue, dark blue. And we're, we've just hit the end of pink and we're moving into purple and purple ends with Barbie, a fairy secret, which is the 20th movie. And I don't think we're going to start having problems genuinely until we hit the thirties with great puppy adventure and spy squad. I really think they're going to keep it up for a long while. I can't even find the part of the picture on the list. Yeah, I, I think there is. Um, I think when we get down to the colons. Yes. I think, and I don't, and I, don't, I it's not. Well, I suppose the next one's a colon one as well, isn't it? But there's there's a there's a bunch of them. But it's a fairy topia colon, which yeah. is a whole different. But there's colon. video game hero, dolphin magic, starlight adventure, spy squad. Yeah, it's that stuff that I'm a bit like ooh um, about. And, I, and, I, and who and knows? I think, they, they're, I think they're coming from a different place, as will as we yeah. will find out. So yeah, I, I I kind of enjoyed this one. I don't, I know I didn't enjoy it as much as you. Um, yeah, I just I really. Oh, it's difficult as well because I'm obviously not coming to it with fresh eyes. I'm coming to it not only having seen it before, but seen it before in the context of it was somebody's favourite movie. And that really does make you appreciate it a lot more when you're alongside someone that genuinely like has a real fondness for something. Mm. And you really see their fondness and nostalgia from it. And I, it's beautiful. The music is lovely. Like I do get, I know I was a bit annoyed about it, but I do get emotional when Barbie and Ken dance their way out of the p- p- palace thing. Like it, it, the music is just so gorgeous and the way it swells and the way the dancing looks. It is really quite emotional. And um, I'd be interested to see what people think about whether they think it's fair that we've put it at number six or whether that it deserved better. Yeah, because I think it's, as as I've been finding out of all these films, each one of them seems to have its fan base. I mean, it's got its own mm. fucking wiki for one, which seems to be very well populated. But you, you mm. sort of go onto YouTube and then you read the comments towards each bit. And for everyone says, oh, this is the one I love growing up. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people love Mamadia. Um, that, yes. that seems to be quite common. But you will the find. fucking best. You will find people that say, oh, I loved prince and the poor but as we know that is the yeah, generally oh yeah, that, the that, that exceeds that almost exceeds barbie fandom that's yeah. that that seems to be encroaching on some other fandoms as well um, and i think this one's important to people as well i can get it i get it i think everyone you know will be a certain age there'll be five when this dvd comes on or someone rents it on amazon prime or whatever <laughs> um and I just wonder if people feel the same way about the later movies. But we shall see. It's exciting, mm, isn't it? We'll find out. It's very exciting. I'm genuinely so fucking pumped 
for the next fairy tale here in Stormont. I really hope I'm not disappointed. I don't think I will be. They've never let me down before, although I did see some bullshit about Bibble that I am interested Oh, I saw some bullshit about, about Bibble. We'll talk about it next yeah. time because... Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how that goes. But um, otherwise, yeah. Exciting stuff. Excellent. Excellent.